Hi, this is Paul Turner with Venify. And in this session of SSH 101, we're going to talk a little bit about port forwarding. Every once in a while, I get a few questions about port forwarding, whether it's safe and frankly, how to set it up or potentially how to prevent setting it up. So let's start with a little bit of a scenario here. If I've got a server here on the right and I want to access it from a client, but the networking folks, they've decided that there shouldn't be easy access between the two networks that these two hosts are set up on. So they've set up a firewall between there. So I go to the firewall folks. I say, you know what? I really need access through this firewall. Um, here's the business application. Here's the justification. They do some reviews and they say, you know what? We're going to go ahead and pop a hole through the firewall so you can get to port 22 from host, B, uh, from host A to host B only, right? So they make it very restrictive. At that point, I can go ahead and use the SSH client to go ahead and SS, uh, access that server via SSH. But then I got this buddy and he says, you know, I've got this IMAP application that I've been using and I used to have access until they put that firewall in place. What I would do is I would just type in IMAP host D colon 143 to get to this, but because there's that firewall, I can't get to it. So I go, I start doing a little bit of Googling, looking at different options and I say, hey, wait a minute. If I type in a different command when I initiate my SSH connection, it will actually open up a local port here. And if you go ahead and change what you uh, put in as your IMAP host to my host and this particular port, then what will happen is because I've set up this command, when your client connects, it's going to come to my system. Then it's going to go ahead and my client is going to know based on this connection that it needs to port forward this particular port through my SSH connection. The server also gets instructions that it should take and forward that connection off to host D and port 143 so it can get to this application. And you look at this and you say, wow, that's, that's pretty nifty. The challenge is, is there's a few security concerns and we'll come back to that. Before we do that, Let's look a little bit at that command line that we typed in. So what we've done is we've typed in an SSH command. I still need to authenticate over to host B here using the user one account. I already had that. Then um, we take and we say, you know what? I want to enable local port forwarding. So I put in this dash L option. And what I want to do is the, the port that I want to forward is 2001. So I go ahead and put that as the next option uh, in this particular portion of the command line. Then I'm saying once it gets over to the server, what I want to do is I want to forward to this particular port on this particular host. The final little twist in this is that I'm saying that I want to allow remote hosts to be able to access this particular port. I've started with one of the, the more open type of uh, port forwarding options to give you some idea of how that command line works. But if we take and we look at some other options, you can limit the access. If you take and you don't include that gateway ports option, that dash G, then what that does is it will limit the access to this local host. And if you've placed the target address as local host, then you can keep all of the forwarding just to these two hosts. As another option, you could take and say, I want to limit the access on the client to local but I still want to go ahead and uh, forward. So this gives you an idea of how to set up uh, that command. Then we get to a slightly crazier option that the SSH folks um, pulled together. And in that case, what I want to do is I actually want to allow access from this client over on the server over to this server on my SSH client. So I put in a dash R option. And what happens here now is that the 143, because this is the servers over on this side, and the port 2001 is over on the server side. And what happens is the server opens up that port. The app client is configured to talk to the local 2001 port. Then it's going to forward that traffic back the opposite direction. As you can see, that's kind of a crazy option. I'm not sure how many bona fide applications somebody could uh, justify for that. Uh, but it is an option that's been uh, created. So if we look a little bit about how to configure this, right? I've got my SSH command and I've got a few options which I've shown you that I can use to enable port forwarding. In addition to that, I can actually use my SSH config file, which is the configuration file for the client. And I've got a few options there. I can do local forward, remote forward. I can set up gateway ports. But frankly, you know, these are great. It's great to know about these options. But if you're an SSH administrator, 
frankly, you really want to look at limiting port forwarding because it's frankly a very dangerous uh, thing. And so you need to be able to look and say, you know what, if I've got an authorized keys file, I can go ahead and limit and uh, prevent port forwarding by making sure that no port forwarding is enabled. Now, if I do that, I can do some permits. I can, I can uh, do some exceptions, I sh should say. In addition to that, and this is probably the best option, is in my SSHD config file, I can actually take and put some options in here where I can say allow TCP forwarding and set it to no so that it will not allow SSH local forwarding or remote forwarding. I still have the option of doing some exceptions, so I can use the permit open um, on in that SSHD config file. But just kind of to close up this discussion, let's look at some of the risks of this. For starters, if you look at the reasons why this forwarding would exist, it's because I need access through a firewall or because the protocol that I'm using needs to be protected. It doesn't have its own encryption, so I'm going to leverage SSH to do that encryption. But these days, first of all, if I've got firewall rules set up, I don't really want somebody else making decisions about when they're going to allow traffic across that. And if I'm allowing my SSH clients or the people that are allowed to use SSH as a client to make decisions on what they're going to allow through, that's not a great policy. In addition to that, most protocols today now have been uh, enhanced so that they do support operation over TLS or some other encryption. So. The real risks here are that this enables attackers who can compromise that client to now have access to applications remotely undetected, and more critically, now they have the additional options to jump between hosts, basically allowing pivoting between hosts. So hopefully this little session on SSH port forwarding has been helpful. Thanks a bunch for joining. Have a great day. Bye-bye.